Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome everyone to Covenant Community Church, a United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, or whom you love, you are welcome here. Amen? Amen. My name is Jamie Grimes. I'm standing in for Pastor JR today, who's with his family. And I, last I heard, his sister Lula's doing well after her procedure, so that's great. And we're going to be talking about God's peace and God's presence today. We're going to be talking about his word. And the song says, the song speaks of joy. The song speaks of his word. The song speaks of a savior who lights our way. So let's stand and sing. God, our loving parent, we thank you for church, for family, for worship. We thank you most of all for being present with us. We trust and believe that you're present with us here. We trust and believe in your word that we're going to read today and talk about. We ask you, God, to help us lay aside the things that may be burdening us today so that we can try to pay attention to your word in spite of the troubles that we may be dealing with. We trust you to get us through those. And so we trust you to hold them for a moment. We ask you to help us with our distractions that constantly come to mind. And let us be truly present with you in this moment. As we invite you in, we know you've already invited us. So we thank you for that. And we lift up this service and everything about it to your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. We are the people of God who live as the people of hope. Therefore, let us declare it so in our covenant affirmation. I am a child of God. I celebrate God's Holy Spirit coming into my life. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I accept God's Spirit and power to inspire me, guide me, and motivate me to be a witness of the gospel, offering hope, showing faithfulness, sharing joy. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. So we have some announcements. <clears throat> and one way 
if you wish, to find out more about being a witness of the gospel, offering hope, showing faithfulness, and sharing joy, is to be a part of Faith in Action Alabama. And you can be a part in prayer, you can be a part in financial support if you want to, if you don't like to go to meetings, you can write letters from your own home. There are things you can do without even leaving home. But there are also meetings that you can go to, people that you can work with, and people from many churches across the area, and people who don't go to church at all. And there are, I think Pete may have mentioned these before, but there are some guides out in the lobby called People's Agenda, Faith in Action Alabama. So it's very much about what would be best for the people in Alabama, especially those in greatest need. So I encourage you to pick this up and read it, learn the facts that are in there. It's really great information, even if you don't want to get involved in, a, in an effort. Uh, but I encourage you to consider getting involved, just um, learning about it and seeing what God leads you to. There's also out in the lobby an election guide. It's not partisan. Um, it's just put together by Greater Birmingham Ministries. And I think it provides information that the candidates themselves have provided. And it um, has Republican and Democrat, and if there are independents or whatever, it probably has that too. It has information about voting and deadlines and procedures and anything like that that you might need to know. So it's a really helpful guide, and if we were to run out, they also have it on the Greater Birmingham Ministries website. GBM.org. And also, I forgot to mention, not only to welcome, not only those in person, but to welcome those who are watching online by Facebook or by Zoom, and to mention that many of the announcements that we're making today are also listed on our website, such as the days and times and links for services, Bible study, um, midweek life lessons and all that. Our website is www.covenantbirmingham.org. So other announcements. If you look at the back of your bulletin, it might be something that you want to take with you. They're putting the announcements on the bulletin, as you may know. So it talks about Wednesday Life Lessons with J.R. and Deacon Pete Tepley. They're going to be talking about 1 Peter 3, 15 through 22. It's available via Zoom or live stream, so on our Facebook page or on our Zoom. And it's called Sharing Your Joy, which is what we just talked about in the Covenant Affirmation, Sharing Joy. Sunday mornings, we have Lighthouse. It meets at 1030 in person in the back room at the end of the hall or via Zoom. And they finish their study of Revelation. So if you need to know about Revelation, just ask Pete or Carol or Judy they, and, and others. Uh, Anna maybe going, Michael, Bowen. They can fill you in about what Revelation means to them anyway. But they're going to be taking up the Acts of the Apostles. So I encourage you to participate in that. And as I always say, you don't have to be at every one. If you can only come to one and maybe not for a while, you're always welcome. Um, they read a certain part of the scripture and then they discuss it. So you know, it's like Sunday morning, you know, we're not going to read the whole chapter of John 14. Each set of verses can stand on its own and you're welcome to come and just listen, to share your perspective, to ask questions for discussion. It's a great time. Okay, so Elisa has an announcement. Sure. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very excited Elisa. about our Elisa. covenant. Oh, yes, sir. So they can hear you online. Gotcha. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> We're excited about our covenant and friends picnic on June the 4th, Saturday, June the 4th. It's a week from this Saturday. Um, the, of course, it is for covenant members and friends. We want to see old friends, new friends just a time to fellowship together. Um, we've also invited, the, the invitation has been distributed to the students at the Magic City Acceptance Academy and um, Central Alabama Pride um, is distributing the uh, inv invitation on their website as well. Uh, so we are excited to welcome our, our, our family and our community uh, for this time together. Now, your part, we need some help um, we've got a sign-up sheet just to the right of the uh, fellowship area. What, what we need help with, and we're, we're asking um, for you to consider how, what, what fits your gifts. Um, we're going to need some help setting up, 
So come about an hour early. The picnic is from 11 to 2. So we need a, two or three people to agree to come about 10 to 11, help us set up the tables, that sort of thing. And then we need help cleaning up from about, we assume, you know, two until we finish, but hopefully not a full hour, you know, putting the tables back, that kind of thing. Um, we want to ask that we have greeters at the street just so that when people are coming up, they feel welcome. Um, and we're asking that if that's what you're comfortable with, that you take a one hour shift, 11 to 12, 12 to one or one to two. Same thing with the church. Um, you know, if it's raining, we'll be inside and it's a whole other ball game, but God's gonna bless us. We're gonna be outside and we're only gonna have one door to the church open, but we do want someone sitting there just to, you know, make sure that someone knows the closest bathroom to visit, that sort of thing. Um, and then finally, we're asking that for someone who would feel comfortable just monitoring our trash cans because we'll be, you know, busy and we don't want the trash cans overflowing and making a mess, but just somebody to help with that. So the sign up sheet is out there or see me, Donna, Sean, or Jeanette and uh, talk to us about it. We appreciate your help. We want everybody to come and we're excited. We're going to have a good time. Thank you. Can yes. we also just remind people about the blessing box? Yes, and the um, the box for the homeless, mm -hmm. if, if Tammy doesn't mind me mentioning, we have two ways that we're helping feed the sheep directly. Um, there's There are two boxes in the foyer. One is for food for the houseless, things that they can take with them. You know, I believe it's like bags of chips and maybe the snack things with tuna salad, that kind of thing. The other one is the blessing box. And it's for families who are having trouble make it, making it to the end of the month on their budget. There's a, it go, all of the food goes to the freestanding uh, pantry, um, Crestwood Boulevard at Crestwood Boulevard and John Rogers Road. Anyone who needs it can stop by and pick it up at any time. And we do, you know, cans of green beans, macaroni and cheese, whatever you have. And um, it's open 24 hours. We fill it once a week and it's always gone by the next week. So someone is being fed by your gifts to the blessing box and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so there is the newsletter out there in case anyone hasn't already gotten one. It's from May 1st, but there's still some copies out there if you have not gotten the newsletter. And the birthday this week is Shirley Cooper. Happy birthday, May 25th to Shirley. Okay, are there any announcements I've missed? Okay. <clears throat> Hearing none, we have a prayer song, um, Surround Me, O Lord. So, let your presence fill this place, again, about the presence of God. So, we just pray that we will be in a moment of prayer. Think about any thanksgivings that you have to announce, any prayers that you have to announce. And let's meditate on how present God is. God, we thank you for always welcoming and hearing our prayers, those prayers that we have with words, those prayers that we have that may not even need words. And Scripture says that sometimes we pray with groanings and the Holy Spirit prays for us. 
We may have needs that we don't even know yet, but God, you know them all in advance. And that means we may be surprised sometimes, but you're not. God, you're always ready to give us what we need and more. We may not always feel it. We, it may not be what we wanted or when we wanted it, but we trust God that you provide because your love is unconditional. And you're going to give us what we most need in every moment. It may be financial, and the gift you give us may not be the finances. It may be the peace to get through the struggle. We may, de- we may need employment or different employment. Help with relationships. Help with our direction in life. Help with our prayer. Help with trusting you when we don't even know what we want to say to you. Help with trusting you when we're mad at you, when we're frustrated, when we feel alone like Jesus did on the cross. Jesus knows what that's like. And God, you love us no matter what. You can take it because you understand. So we bring you our thanksgivings, and we bring you our prayer requests. One Thanksgiving is a baptism next Sunday. JR is going to be baptizing two people. One of them is a Magic City acceptance student, and they want to be baptized by immersion, and we don't have a pool here. So they're going to do it at Baptist Church of the Covenant at 1.30 next Sunday, the 29th. Anyone's welcome to come if you'd like to come. So that's one Thanksgiving. Does anybody have any others? Well, if we were to thank God for everything, we would be here for days and days and days. But we just thank God for all the blessings that are too many to mention. So we do have one prayer request. Bill Aldridge is with us this morning, and Bill's sister uh, no longer has a battle with leukemia. She's in heaven now, so um, and she died at home. So we lift up Bill and the family in prayer. We give him extra love today and ongoing. Any other prayer requests that anybody has, if you'll just mention the name. Any, any special ones, Andrew, and I lift up my daughter-in-law who's sick today. Any others? My cousin David. Cousin David. If you have an unspoken request, please raise your hand. God knows about all these requests and any that you might not be thinking of today. God knows what's in the prayer book. And the prayer book is out there on the table in the lobby. You're welcome to write prayers either before or after service to email them, covenant covenant at covenantbirmingham.org, or to call the church. But we lift up all these prayers. God, you know every tear, every joy, and every mediocre feeling. You know all about us. We lift these needs to you, trusting that you're fulfilling them, laying them at your feet, because there's no one else that we can go to who loves us like you do, who cares for us like you do, and who always answers prayer in your time and in your way, the best way. We lift them up, and we thank you that you hear them. We thank you for this opportunity to share them. And we trust you, God, that we can hold your unchanging hand who will guide us through to the joys that you have waiting for us, your peace and your presence. We lift up the entire church across the world, all the needs of our community, state, and world. We especially lift up war areas, Ukraine, and many others, that they will trust your light as well, even when things may seem dark or may be very dark and very painful at times. We lift all of them up to you. We trust you in those situations and ask you to give us insights in whatever we can do to share the joy and the faithfulness and the gifts that you've given us with others around us. 
For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeff Watwood, treasurer of the Board of Directors. Uh, in a few moments, uh, Jamie will bring the message on Jesus' gift to me. I've been a member here uh, 11 years now, I think. So, and I came from a large family, and there's me and uh, my wonderful baby sister left out of seven of us. So. Covenant has become my chosen family over the years, and the friends that I've made here is more like family to me. Uh, you get harassed <laughs> by the pastor, by the pianist, by other people, you know, but it still feels like home, and that's, that's Jesus' gift to me that I know I'm welcome, I'm loved, and that's what your tithes and offerings help us as, as the leaders of, of this church keep the doors open so that we can continue to reach those out there that don't know that love, especially with everything that's going on now with the elections battling against our family, you know. Um, so. Your tithes and offerings is what helps us keep, you know, in the Baptist church, they'd say the door's open, the light's on. But our tithes and offerings go further than that because we're reaching out to the community, our people. So we have multiple ways you can give on the screen. You can donate via Cash App, uh, Venmo. Those are secure sites as well. You can give on our Facebook page. Uh, if you're in person, you can drop your offering in the plate uh, right outside the sanctuary doors. Um, all secure ways to give, or you can mail your contribution to the church. Um, and Mr. Barry will see that it gets in the bank. I, I don't ever see those, but I, I, as the treasurer, I wouldn't do it without Mr. Barry. So. Um, so just give as the Lord leads you to give, and uh, let us pray. Gracious, gracious God, as we come to you today, thankful to be able to be in service with our chosen family and friends. Lord, we ask that you use this service, whether it be someone here in person or someone watching via our live stream, Zoom, that this service will touch them in a way, Lord, that they know they are loved, abundantly they are made perfect in god's sight lord we ask that you use this service to continue to help us Lord, we ask that you use the tithes and offerings to help us to continue your message lord not only in our community but other communities lord we ask this in your name amen <laughs>
please rise in spirit and stand as you are able for the reading of God's word, John 14, 23 through 27. Jesus said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. God will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the one who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom God will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the word of God. In Psalm 67, 2, it says, So that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let us pray. God, we pray in these moments once again that you will help us focus on your word, that people will focus on your words, and that what I say will be your words and your message, that your ways may be known on earth, and your salvation among all nations, not just salvation to go to heaven, as important as that is, but I'm going to assume that's not a question this morning. And if it is, you can see me afterwards or reach out to our church and we'll talk to you about that. But I'm talking about salvation from letting the troubles and tribulations of life, which are not deniable, but salvation from letting, letting those overcome us. Reaching out for those gifts that you give us, your presence <clears throat> and your peace that you spoke about in your word. So God, I'm just praying that your word will come true, and I know it will because I trust your word. May it reach our ears, and not only that, but may it reach our hearts. And may it extend beyond Sunday morning into our week and our future. For we claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. So in John's Gospel that Anna just read for you, thank you, Jesus says, Those who love me will keep my word. And we don't often, or I don't often hear as often as I used to, the idea of someone keeping their word. You may hear it sometimes, but it seems to be sort of fading. I think it means to be honest, to be faithful to what we say we'll do. And since Jesus was saying <clears throat> those who love him will keep his word, I think that means to be faithful to what he taught and the kind of life that he modeled for us while he was here does not mean do it perfectly, though. But how do we do that? How do we keep his word? I think to keep his word, we have to read it. We have to know it. Or we don't know what we're supposed to be keeping. We need to be exposed to God's word in some way, on a somewhat regular basis, to get the most out of it. And I'm encouraging it to be more than just one hour a week. But if you do have limited time, like I do, I suggest focusing on the Gospels or maybe signing up for a daily meditation. I find that it works a lot better if it comes to me rather than me going to it. So thanks to Deacon T Pete Tepley, quite a few years ago, he got me on to a daily meditation that comes to my email every day, and it's not very long. Do I read it every day? No. 
But ever since he introduced it to me, I've read every single one of them. Sometimes I get, one time I got six or seven months behind. It took me a long time to catch up. But I'm caught up now. Because they're so good, I just can't stand to miss one. Now, there are some that just don't particularly say anything to me that day, you know. Um, but there are some that I mark as unread, even though I've read them. Because they're so good, I know I want to read them again. And you'll hear some stuff from those in the sermon today. It's really powerful stuff. You can see Pete or me or Judy um, or JR, and we'll be happy to forward one to you so that you can sign up if you'd like to. But anyway, find something. If, it, if you have a hard time remembering, find something that comes to you like I do. doesn't matter if you do miss them and you don't read them every day. Read them when you can. Anyway, Jesus said that for those who keep his word, God will love them and come to them. I encourage you to get your bulletin out. Uh, this is really a reading that I encourage you to take with you and keep. I want you to look at what it says, and I want you to notice what it doesn't say. So, in line two, <clears throat> well, starting in line one, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. God will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Now, let's look at what it says next. It says, anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. What does it not say? Jesus could have gone on there, and he chose not to. Why? He didn't finish what he started, and there's a reason. He says, God will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Though anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. He does not say, and therefore we will not come to them and we will not be with them. He didn't say that. So when we say, if you obey his teaching, if you keep his word, Jesus' word, he'll come to you, that does not mean the opposite is true. And if you're not good enough, God won't be with you. So that's really critical, what he doesn't say. So this is not an exclusive club, an, an in and out, us versus them. It's an encouragement for those who do, when they do, but it's not condemning and judging those who don't. God is still present with them as well. What I think happens is that when we keep God's word, which is about love, you know, those of you who have parents or those of you who have friends, if you have one child, you love that child a great deal. If you have another child, that doesn't mean you run out of love. Sometimes you might run out of time or energy. <laughs> But I don't know of a parent who ever said, well, I had so many children, I, I couldn't love them all. Okay, I've never heard someone say, I have so many friends, I can't love them all. You might not have as much time with them all as you want, but your, your affection for them doesn't go down the more you have, okay? It's like lighting one candle and then taking that flame and lighting another candle. You don't run out of flame. You might run out of wick and have trouble lighting it like I do, but... The more you have, it just simply builds. The more people you love, especially loved ones, family, children, or friends, it doesn't run out. And that's because it tends to be the more you have, the more you give away. I mean, backwards. The more you give away, the more you have. So I think when we, oh, when we follow God's word, God gives us a deeper experience. Well, it, we get a, a deeper experience of that love because we're giving it away. We're completing the cycle. God's giving the love to us, just pouring it on us all the time. And when we give it away, it kind of creates the flow, like an electric current. When you plug something in, it, it creates the flow. Kay did a sermon one time about being plugged in. Works better, okay? The lamp can be really pretty sitting on a table. It can be gorgeous. When you plug it in, it's completing its function in a deeper way. So that's what I think it is. You get a deeper experience of it, but it doesn't mean you didn't have God's love when you weren't keeping God's word. So <clears throat> similarly, if you think of someone you love, if you live distantly from them, and maybe you don't talk to them as much as you want to, they don't stop loving you. You don't stop loving them, typically. But when you are with them, and you enjoy being with them, you have a deeper experience of the love, and you're sharing it. It was there the whole time, but you're sharing it because it's active, it's moving. And when we let that love move and flow, things like Greater Birmingham Ministries, or Faith in Action, or 
helping someone across the street, whatever it is, there's an enrichment there. So it lights our way, like the song said. The next part of the gospel is even more good news, reason to hope, something exciting and reassuring to hold on to when we're in struggling moments or days or weeks or months or years. Jesus said some famous words that are worth memorizing, putting on the fridge or your mirror, your screensaver. And I didn't ask Tammy to do it this way, but it's really cool how it's right at the top of the page all by itself like I did it on purpose. And I didn't do it on purpose. But, you know, you could cut that out and put it on your bathroom mirror and you'd be better off. My peace I give you. This is Jesus talking. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We don't do this that often, but it's so important. I want to ask you to read it with me, okay? My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And that's not the only time in that chapter he said things like that, by the way. He says it over and over. You know when the teacher repeats something, that's going to be on the test, probably? When Jesus repeats things, that means he really wants us to get it, okay? So, if you are um, willing, I want you to read it one last time. Not last time, one more time. My peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, does that mean you're going to go out of here and never let your heart be troubled and never be afraid? No, but it means you should look at this when that happens. And remember that Jesus said not to do that, so obviously Jesus is going to help you, right? Jesus is not going to give you a command and then not give you the means to carry it out. So that means you have Jesus' help when you do have those, because you're a human being like me. Well, you're probably not like me. I'm kind of odd. <laughs> but you probably have moments of fear. You probably have moments of trouble. But there's a scripture to hope on. We need peace. I think we do, and here it is in God's word. Now, if we believe the words of Jesus are for all of us, not just the people who heard it that day, it's a universal, ongoing, ever true word of God, then that means it's for us right here today in 2022. <clears throat> Some of you may be thinking, I wish it for me. I wish it were for me. I wish Jesus would give me peace. And I can understand that feeling, totally. It's valid. But when that happens, I think one of two things is going on. Either a misunderstanding about God, which is easy to do, or a misunderstanding of peace, which is easy to do, especially if you grew up in a church. I don't know how to say this other than they got it wrong. The church I grew up in got some things wrong, okay? We get things wrong, but when we know better, we do better. So that's what we're going for here. The first one is the misunderstanding of God and God's presence. God promised to be present with us. We sang about that at prayer time. Surround me, O Lord. For those who like to read, I suggest The Shack by William Young. A few years ago, people like Kay and Moana were just talking all the time about this book, The Shack. Like it was, you know, one of the greatest things they'd ever discovered in their whole life. And after I read it, I decided it was one of the greatest things I'd ever discovered in my whole life. I mean, when they talk about something like that, you just need to go get it and read it. It's right next to the Bible in my mind, you know. Not quite as important, but close. And if you don't like to read, I suggest that you get the shack and read it. Now, there is, there, huh? You can get it by audio, right. Now, there is a tragedy that happens, and some people are not ready for that and, and don't want to go there, and that's okay if you don't want to read it because there's a tragedy in it. I'm not going to lie. But the author of this book, and there was a movie too, by the way, the author gives us a beautiful picture of what God's presence is like, even though when we have these moments where we do feel God's presence and we're in joy and we're just um, in almost like a, a touch of heaven on earth, and then we go back to real life and difficulty. 
the author gives us a beautiful picture of what that can be like and kind of how to think through that, or at least it was wonderful to me. It may not speak to everybody. But God's presence is peaceful to me. Since I've learned at Covenant that God is not waiting to see if I'm going to be good enough to make it, I'm not nervous in God's presence. I'm not uncomfortable with God's presence. To me, God's presence is love, it's reassuring, it's uplifting peace. Amen? Amen. So, but there's a misunderstanding because sometimes if we associate God with peace and when we don't feel peace, we assume God's not present. That's an illusion. It's a myth. One of the things I got from the meditations I read. The illusion of the separation from God is one of the most persistent and challenging things that causes difficulty in our lives. Because think about it. If you feel separated from God, cut off from God, then what is that going to do to how you think of heaven, how you read the scripture, how you feel when other people talk about how wonderful God is and how all the things God has done for them and you somehow feel separate and cut off. Some of us know what that feels like because we were told by churches, you, God can't love you. And it might be because of being gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender or being divorced, living with someone we're not married to. Who knows what it was? God doesn't love that. And even if they say God loves the sinner but hates the sin, okay, well, if the sin is something you're doing every day, that's kind of hard to figure out, right? But when we don't feel peace, that does not mean God's not present. There's never a time when God is not present. So it would be really hard for me in this church to separate you from the air. It's all around you. You're breathing it. You can hold your breath if you want to, but you'll pass out so that you can breathe. Okay. It'd be hard for me to separate you from water. Water is supposedly 70% of our body. It's in every cell. I can't separate you from the water in here. Another example is I can't separate you from gravity. Okay, You can be anywhere on the earth. You know, there might be a few machines that spin you around fast enough, but most of the time, this, this example works, I can't separate you from gravity. I can't separate it. If you put a fish in a fish bowl, you can't separate it from the water you know, without taking it out of the bowl. You can't separate it from the water. It's living in it, swimming in it, breathing it all the time. That's what God is like. You, you can't be separate from it. We used to say sometimes in communion about being separate from God, and we changed that because it's not true. We may feel separated from God, and we want to acknowledge that. In fact, Mother Teresa, you know who Mother Teresa is, right? We think of her as one of the holiest people ever who spent her whole life serving the poorest of the poor, the people nobody else would even touch, right? There were lots of times in her life, if you read her writings, lots of times in her life when she felt separate. She didn't feel God's presence. But what did she do? She trusted God and kept serving. Even though she didn't feel warm, fuzzy presence of God all the time, you, you might think she always felt the presence of God. She didn't. A lot of the saints didn't. They were human like we are. So the idea is to not believe that you're separate from God, even though you may feel like it, and that's okay. What did Jesus say on the cross? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? No reason to feel bad when you feel separate from God, but it's a myth. So this is something <clears throat> I want you to trust me on. If you don't trust what the preacher starts with, then you're not going to like the rest of the sermon either. Some things you just need to believe. You know, if you don't believe that matter is composed of atoms, then you're not going to gain much from a chemistry class because that's what chemistry is based on. If you don't believe things like racism and sexism exist, then when someone tells you an example, you won't even, there won't even be anything, any way in your mind that could be true. To understand me as a person or as a friend or whatever, you have to believe that I forget things sometimes. If you don't believe that, you could ask Jerry, but what he would probably say is, let's do it this way. Let me tell you the things Jamie remembers. <laughs> That'll be much faster. You can ask Dodd. I, I sent him a, an email today, this morning, with my sermon in it. Did I attach the sermon? No. <laughs> 
to understand <clears throat> J.R.'s teaching, you have to just accept that he's 29. <laughs> Otherwise, you won't get his sermon on Hebrews 13 and 8. It's the shortest sermon he's ever preached. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for J.R., so he's still 29. <laughs> he doesn't preach that on Sunday because some people would complain that the sermon was too short, wouldn't they? They would feel like they didn't get their money's worth. So some things you just need to believe. And one of those is that God is present. Jeff, if I preach longer, do we get more money, or do they pay more if I, if I stop sooner? Usually, it's the pastor stops them when we get longer. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll try to speed up. Let's go on, just to be safe that it's not too short yet. So, you need to believe that God is present with you. Otherwise, the word of God is not true. Also, remember, you won't always feel it. Doesn't mean you screwed up, by the way. It might mean that if you were more loving, you would feel it more, but it doesn't mean it went away. It's even possible to do something loving and still not feel it, by the way, because we're human beings. So to me, that brings peace, to just believe that and trust it even when we don't feel it. But there's one other misunderstanding I want to mention. You've heard it here before. The peace that Jesus gives, remember he said it's not as the world gives. So what that one thing that means is the peace that Jesus gives does not mean you won't have troubles, you won't have pain, you won't have suffering, you won't have loss. It does not mean you'll have material prosperity. If you do, fine, but that's one thing some churches get wrong, that if you live right, you'll have all the money you need. You will have all you need, in God's view, it won't always be comfortable. It won't always be you'll have all your bills paid on time. Tithing does help with that typically, but it does not mean everything will go well financially and you'll be well off. But it is really good to me anyway, helpful, reassuring, almost like being in the eye of a hurricane. You may have experienced a lot of pain, some more than others. You're going to experience more. But when you have these moments of love, of peace with God, you know that you'll get through it because God will be with you. You'll get through it one way or another. It may not be the way you want to. Sometimes the healing is on the other side. We pray for healing, and we usually want physical healing for, for ourselves or for a person. Sometimes God heals us ultimately in heaven. But it's kind of like being calm at the bottom of the ocean, even when there's a hurricane, high wet tidal waves on the surface, still calm at the bottom in the core. And you know, this is earth, it's not heaven. So he's not talking, Jesus is not talking about peace from everything that's difficult. But he does offer the peace that's eternal, that's perfect in heaven, but available in small ways on the earth too. How do we try to increase it? to get a little bit more of that peace here on earth, keeping his word, loving other people. Sometimes that helps the hurt be a little less. Sometimes it's a lot less. But if we keep his word, it'll help us experience that peace more often. Amen? Amen. So the last thing I want to point out in this gospel is that Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. And I think this gives us peace, too, because we don't need to be afraid of God. We don't need to be afraid of things we cannot control. Now, we need to be afraid if we see a snake and we don't know if it's poisonous. Okay? We need to be afraid enough to not play in traffic. If you want to call that fear, you can just call it common sense, being practical. But we don't need to be afraid of God or of losing God's presence, losing God's gifts, or things we cannot control. In the fifth chapter of John's Gospel, John asks a man if he wants to be healed and says, if you do want to be healed, get up and walk. All healings don't work that way. And God, sometimes God doesn't heal us physically, but God offers us spiritual healing. Things like 
God's presence, God's peace, and other things like mercy, forgiveness, strength, all the gifts of God. Unconditional love is a really important one. And God sometimes gives us a gift of nudging us gently and lovingly saying, you can do better with that. Let's try this or let's try that. Let's try forgiving. Let's try reaching out even when we don't want to. Sometimes God gives us those kinds of gifts, although they don't feel like gifts at the time necessarily. So if you want that kind of feeling, that peace, sorry, healing, if you want that kind of healing, just ask God for it. Because the word says that peace is available. That if we keep God's word, God will come to us. And it does not say in the moments we don't keep God's word, God leaves us. That's not there. Now, people in the Old Testament probably believe things like that, if you read the Old Testament. But earlier I said, when we know better, we do better, right? And that's one of the things Jesus came to do is to kind of correct some things like the idea that God will leave us. Now we know God doesn't leave us. So if you are watching us online and you want to participate in communion in a few minutes, I invite you to get something ready, like some bread or some juice. And we're getting ready to sing a song about peace. Coming down from the Father above. Now, we know God is not a male. You can sing mother if you want to in that song. <clears throat> Sweep over my spirit forever. And that means even when I don't feel it. In fathomless billows of love. So I pray that you will trust in God's presence, trust in the peace that Jesus provided to get you through whatever you're going to face this day, this week, and ongoing because God's word promised it. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and sing. Sunday of Easter, let us remember some of Jesus' gifts to us. Let us remember to follow Jesus' teaching for how we should live our lives. <coughs> let us remember the peace that Jesus offers us. Let us remember the desire of Jesus and the desire of God that we not be afraid, that we not live in fear. Let us remember the desire of Jesus and the desire of God that we not have troubled hearts. Let us be nourished this morning by God's steadfast and unconditional love for us. And let that love flow through us to the folks we meet in our lives, whether they're close to us or whether they're in the grocery store or wherever we, we may come in contact with them. And let us not forget that this table, this banquet table that we are about to partake of is God's table, it's not ours. And everybody is welcome to it. Everybody is welcome to partake of this spiritual meal. And before we do that, we may allow ourselves, as Jamie discussed, to feel separated from God. You may feel separated from God right now. But before we receive this holy sacrament, let's prepare ourselves by reflecting on those things that leave us feeling separated from God, others, and our best selves, with a moment of personal and private confession.
It is my privilege this morning to stand here and remind you that God has heard your confession, that you are forgiven, that you are not separated from God, and that God loves you unconditionally. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of consecration of these elements. Creator God, mother and father and parent of us all, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit onto these elements so that they may allow us to experience in our hearts and our bodies your steadfast and unconditional love for us and also allow us to remember the gifts that Jesus has given us. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would, on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together and remember the gifts that Jesus has given. And after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink together and experience the gifts that Jesus has given us. God, for all you have done for us, we say thanks. God, for all the gifts that Jesus has given us, we say thanks. Please help us be better followers of the way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Closing, thank you for being with us in person or virtually. We pray that you have a good week and that your clothing works the way you want it to. <laughs> so before we dismiss, I want to ask one more time if you'll get your bulletin out. I want you to remember this verse. Now it's the last time. I'd like us to say it together one more time. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. And so let's sing about these gifts that God has given us that the world didn't give us and the world can't take away. I'm glad you stopped, actually. The next verse is important because that's what a lot of the sermon was about.
So let's sing it one more time, but I want to do verse 3 twice. Okay? The piece, verse 3. Nothing can take away your peace from Jesus, even when you don't feel it. And the benediction is just that I pray that will be true for you, that God will help you with faith in the moments that are difficult, so you know his gifts and his presence are always with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.